The first folio is a celebrity and certainly an icon of our culture. Uh, anyone who's had any sort of schooling or even any exposure to, to popular culture knows about Shakespeare, sometimes even when they don't realize it. And the first folio, there's something romantic about it. Uh, at Sotheby's, when we have a first folio come up for auction, it really is an event. We get a lot of media attention from around the world. We get bidders and dealers from around the world. A couple of times when we've had first folios, the sales have been evening events, which is unusual for a book and manuscript sale. Uh, so there's a whole energy that you don't get in a typical auction. I do think that this is one of the, if not the, single most charismatic books in the world and people want to own it. People want to own it even if they have no intention of reading it. Raymond Scott was just this guy who walked in off the street one day in uh, June and uh, had a book with him which he wanted to show to us and I met him at tea and he really was quite a character. I mean he didn't look at all like anybody who ever frequents the Bulger was dramatic because of the way it was brought in um, by a gentleman who purported to have come from Cuba, but he didn't. He was uh, wearing uh, designer sunglasses, which he never took off. He presented to Richard Kuchter a, a box of Cuban cigars, which are probably illegal in this country. But what Richard Kuchter saw was a desecrated book. Of course, this was the worst place in the world to bring it because we're like folio central, you know. So, <laughs> if you're going to bring in a first folio that's possibly stolen, um, you wouldn't walk in the door of the one place in the world that knows the most about first folios. Throughout the history of the first folio, a number of people have tried to associate themselves with it. Uh, on one hand, we have Raymond Scott, an infamous uh, character, and on the other, we have Queen Victoria. Well, collectors love to have great things for their own sake, and I think also because they then become associated with those great things. Uh, the First Folio is a book that is particularly, I think, prone to that uh, sort of collecting because it's so widely recognized. Angela Burdett Coutts was one of the most remarkable um, women in Victorian England. She purchased a major first folio. Well, the Queen heard about it, and the Queen gave Angela Burdett Coutts a piece of wood from Hearn's Oak, that is the big oak tree that's mentioned in Shakespeare's play, The Merry Wives of Windsor, in order to have a casket made uh, to house the first folio. It's box really is like a reliquary and it's it's um, you know it's not a it's not a piece of Shakespeare's hair or bone or something that's in there but it's it's his book. The folio continues to inspire creativity. In the 20th century a scholar Charlton Hinman invented the Hinman collator to compare the text of 55 folios held at the Folger. The Hinman collator is a massive machine with blinking lights. Uh, it's designed to detect variations between copies of, multiple copies of the same book. Charlton Hinman was a very interesting fellow. By 1949, he had a prototype and spent several years with uh, of intensive work collating these 56 copies of the first folio. There was a tremendous effort to uh, discover all these variants between copies, tabulate them again with the, uh, the object of getting as close as possible to what Shakespeare actually wrote. 
I, do, I don't think his motivation was, was ever um, riches uh, or, or, um, or even acclaim. I think, I think it was a sincere desire to, to serve the memory of, of Shakespeare and his texts. Hinman was clearly obsessed with the text of the first folio, but of course Hinman's obsession was only possible because of Henry Folger's obsession with collecting the first folio. Henry Folger understood that a serious study of the first folio would require a number of them to be collected in one place. He collected over a third of those in the world, 82 in all. The Folgers never had children of their own, and so in some ways this collecting became the central purpose of their lives together. Some would say that the first folio collection became a means by which Folger justified his wealth. It certainly is a great gift to the American people, and we are all the richer for it. Never say that a book is always increasing in value, and yet historically when you look at the first folio, that's exactly what's happening. The current record is just over six million dollars for a fine copy that was sold in 2001. I have no doubt that if it came up or a copy of comparable quality came up, the price would be even higher. Eventually, it's going to be a $10 million book. The first folio may be one of the most sought after books for collectors, but its real value for scholars, for students, and performers is that it gives us the most intimate and direct connection with one of the greatest writers in the English language.